don't trust you. <laughs> I read a hippo on something like I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Your producing skills. <laughs> I haven't produced in 12 years. But it's obvious. <laughs> you get a little better every time. Good evening. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. <laughs> we were talking. They're opening Golden Corral. I know. <laughs> I can't believe that. Golden Corral. And, then, and they were saying like the whole time they were like buffets. They ain't coming back. Like what? Well, well, that's the fucking. That is the buffet. If if that Golden Corral can come back, the casinos can put back their buffets. Don't you think? Well, they say they're going to do a cafeteria style, so that's going to be like lunch ladies just putting crap in your plate. It's going to. I be- know, but people are still in line. Yeah, coughing on And they're still next to each other. And yeah, Excuse like. Excuse me. How, how does that Excuse accomplish me. anything? Uh, can you. Can you uh, <laughs> get I, some I, more I, gravy. Can like, I get a. <laughs> I, I want this uh, Alfredo sauce on my linguine. <laughs> and could you put some bacon bits in there? Can you do some bacon bits? <laughs> Excuse me. Bacon bits. Can I get some bacon bits? Can I get some. Can I get some bacon bits? <laughs> Hi, Rosalinda. Bacon bits. I want bacon bits in my Alfredo. <laughs> Hey, can I get a chives? Can you put the little green onions? Can you sprinkle it with the green onions? Sprinkle it with the green onions. Please sprinkle it with the green onions. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Distance. Six feet. Six feet. <laughs> six feet. They're never going to do that. They're never going to be able to do it. Keep right. people six feet, I'm saying. And they, like, they might as well just, oh, well, what's the point? Like, what's the difference if the lady's putting it on your plate? Or you're putting it on your plate if the guy's so, standing right next to you. <laughs> I wanted to eat, and I, 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 I'm working again. My place opened up, and we got to wear a mask. Yeah. So the furniture place. And I said, you know what? Let me... Uh, I'm sure they're wearing masks at the Golden Corral, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure. Those masks have been... They probably wiped their ass with their masks. They're probably skid, <laughs> skid marks on the mask. No, no, either way. I know. Hey, so I, I wanted to go to the Chinese restaurant. And I went to the one on Tropicana on the other side of the highway. So if you're going... Not the 15, but the 515, 215 right over there. Going, going wet. Uh, I'm not going to pretend like I know. All right. Going east. Going really <laughs> east on the Tropicana. Uh, I don't want to you know drop the name of the place although they did something you know good i guess but they went what? overkill you like this place it's good then why not all right it's uh it's a china kitchen okay okay so china kitchen and uh i haven't placed an order since before all this crap happened so i walked in there to get my stuff they took plastic shower curtains and taped the wall and made walls of plastic shower curtains around the cash register around where the seating area used to be and then they made a little slit about yay big to put your money through, and that was it. <laughs> and it's just clear plastic <laughs> taped everywhere. Oh, you can see them? Yeah. So you see them, you see everything, and then there's clear plastic It'd be even everywhere. funnier if it was like black or, or yeah, like. Yeah, no, no. Or like uh, uh, shower curtains that have like designs on them. <laughs> it, looks like, it looks like if Fallout 76 had a Chinese restaurant. Right. And they tried to put a bubble. They tried to put themselves in the bubble. Right. And when they were, it, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> And, but the food was still good. But they, they, so wait, so how do you get the food? If it just you the put the money slot. through the little slot, then they try to like they push the flap. There's a flap. Yeah, they, they they push the flap and then they try to reseal it. <laughs> <laughs> they try to hermetically seal the Chinese food. <laughs> wow, dude, this is so bizarre. All of it. <laughs> like no, I'm saying like everything is so weird now. This is a weird time to. You live know, it's in. a weird time. I'm not wearing a New York hat. I'm wearing a Raiders hat. That's Kareem. What's up, Kareem? I miss you, man. He's my friend. All right. One of my best friends. Kareem. All right. Me and him been through some shit together. Oh, (laughs) When you have a friend like that, that's like brother level. Battles. When you said, oh, man, we've been through some shit together. (laughs) Someone, Someone initiated a fist fight. No, we didn't fight. He, he'd kill me, dude. He weighs like 400 pounds. Oh, shit. He's gigantic. Kareem, you're gigantic. <laughs> you're gigantic, Kareem. You're fucking people yeah, he's, up. he's a big dude. <laughs> big dude. All right, so. Yeah, we used to run a club. Well, I ran a club, and he was my security. Out here now, this place has fucked my head up. Now, when I hear club, I just think titty bar. No, it was a, like a live music. Yeah. Well, we did all kinds of stuff there, but 
mostly live music, but sometimes there was a back some, door. sometimes we would do Ooh, like the underground strip club thing. Oh uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> so in my hometown, there was a uh, uh, there was Yorktown, and then there was Cortland, right. and then Peekskill. So Peekskill was let, let's be fucking real, call it what it is. It was the ghetto, and Cortland was the white trash area, and then Yorktown was the middle middle class. And on this, uh, you know, between all these places, they had Route Six. And in the middle was a was a Mexican bar called Lacuna, and Sunday night was the strip club night, and every other <laughs> night, and it was just one chunky right, Mexican just one bar. Night. She would just get on. People just throw dollar bills at her, and she's just just and it's just a swarm of Mexican dudes just throwing dollar bills at her. And then every other and then after she's done, like semi hot Mexican chicks. I'm like, yes, there's obviously hot of anyone, but semi hot Mexican chicks would come out in slutty outfits, and you could pay them a dollar and dance with them. <laughs> no, I was just like, no, um, get and then she'd be like, no, no we no we, we did like live rock, punk rock music, metal, uh, you know, and then we did live hip hop stuff, and then the hip hop dude, uh, so what? They, you they would rent the club, and then this dude would bring all these chicks. Oh, uh, of course, and groupies. Then, so it was like, no, it was a strip club. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So he, he's like, he's like, you know, he bring his own strippers. <laughs> he'd rent the he'd rent basically he'd rent my club to be a he'd bring be his a, own strippers and then he'd charge people to get in. That's actually smart. And then um Yeah, and I made all this money selling fucking booze. Well, there's no old So it works great for everybody. But <laughs> he attracted a CD element. <laughs> I never forget one night I was walking in the back of my own club and like it was full. And I was like looking around. And these people had face tattoos and shit. And I was like, dude, it, I'm like, I thought to myself, I'm standing in a prison yard right now. <laughs> <laughs> I could get shanked like any second. And I, I own this place. The fuck you? I, that's when I started I thinking. That's when I started thinking about like, okay, this is maybe not a great, you know, business decision. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah exactly. you would say ghetto you would say motherfucker. motherfucker. <laughs> yes. You bring in the ghetto motherfuckers for sure. That'll be and the then, title of today's show. And then ghetto someone, no, and then uh, there was a beef, right? A beef. These two, yeah, two dudes saw each other from different neighborhood or whatever. They had a beef. Well, I don't know what their fucking beef was, but so the one guy went outside because no one ever got a gun inside my club because we were. I was. You didn't want that. It. You didn't want right, that. Right, search everybody. And if they said they had a gun, even if they had a permit, I told them put it in your fucking car. Yeah. You're not bringing it in. So, uh, guy went outside. Got his gun, waited for the dude. Oh, look what happened all of a sudden. What? Oh, captions again. I didn't touch anything. No, I don't know. Anyway. All right. So uh, he waited for the dude, and then the dude was leaving, and he opened the door and fucking shot him. Killed him? No, shot him in the hip with a twenty two. Oh, but that would hurt. I got shot inside the door of my place. Uh, you and that's when I started thinking about, you know, like, this is probably not a good business. <laughs> Somehow. I was making money. For, don't, I was for sure making money, but it was like, ah, this is good. Not, I don't want to know, but I would imagine, like, you could walk away from a twenty two. You'll hurt. The guy was still yelling and screaming, you know. It hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. And my other friend, Tad, who was, uh, works... Tad. <laughs> yeah, my friend, is, his is, name's Tad. Man. Is he white? He's cool, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course he is with that he's sta- name. He's a stagehand. <laughs> but uh, he was work- He worked the door for me sometimes, and he quit. Because oh, he was shit. standing right next to the guy. He's like, I could have got shot. It's like, I guess you could. You need Palomino. Yeah, well, me and Kareem, we took care Kareem. of Kareem. Yeah, we took care of him. You could not have, like, two polar opposites. You have Kareem... Yeah, and Tad. Yo, Kareem. <laughs> and Tad. Hi, I'm Tad. Actually, they're friends, too. They're, they're Hi. Really cool. Yo, what's good, Tad? Hey, Kareem. How are tell you him, doing? Tell him about the guy who stole from you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I pulled out a gun. Pulled a gun. <laughs> yeah, this guy. Uh, Kareem just became the director of the show. Right. <laughs> I will tell the story because he has. And it's, okay. a, tr- it's, it's a totally 100% true story. And their fucking uh, witnesses can back up. <laughs> So this guy was uh, in a band, and he was uh, packing up his stuff, and he started taking our stuff, like microphones, cables. You mm. know? It was our, our shit. He was, first of all, he was drunk. He was drunk as fuck. Uh, so my sound guy, Chris Lee, he's another guy that I follow. Uh, 
my friend, uh, I share his stuff sometimes. He plays guitar and shit. Uh, he, he was like, hey, come come here. And then he'll go back in the back. He's like, oh, this guy's trying to steal our shit. And I was like, what? You trying to steal our fucking shit? <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so I uh, grabbed him. I'm like, you know, I got my stuff. I like, look in his bag. He's like, oh, this is mine. This is mine. Like, <laughs> I said, take all this stuff out. I was like, what? Dude, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so just get out. And he's like, Herbert I was like, dude. Just. It, was, it was Herbert Durbin. <laughs> right. So I just grabbed him. And I'm like by the shoulder <laughs> and uh the, the other dude was with me so we just we just fucking basically carried him to the door right and we're like get the fuck out of here so threw him out the door so he's still out there you know we're closing the bar and shit no oh, he's waiting for his you. car's across the street yeah so he needs just standing out there on the sidewalk it's like 20 minutes goes by i look out the window he's still out there uh. I go, and at this time too i drank a lot <laughs> So I drank a lot of vodka and uh, Red Bull. Oh, Jesus <laughs> and I was like, Christ. Uh, and I was like, this motherfucker's still outside. Like, ah, what the fuck? Jesus so I Christ. go outside. I'm like, what the fuck? And I go, I'm going to go over there and talk to him. So uh, dude's uh, Wendy's girlfriend. None of this is going to end well. Boyfriend was with me. Okay. He was like, well, I'll go with you across the street. And uh, my other guy that worked the door for me sometimes named Smoke, black guy. Smoke. Yeah, his, <laughs> that that was his name. He's dead now. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, no, but he did. He died of like uh, some kind of heart problem. He died of smoking. Yeah, he didn't die from getting killed or anything. But anyway, um, so we walk across the street, and I'm like, "Hey, motherfucker, why are you still on the sidewalk?" Was Tad with you? It, no, <laughs> Tad already quit by then. <laughs> I had no surprise. So. Uh, <laughs> I go out there and I go, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck out of here. And he's like, start talking shit. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking shit? Like, you've been out here for half an hour. You tried to steal my shit. He's like, just get in your car and get the fuck out of here. And he goes, whoa, whoa what if I don't? And he, and he like opens his trunk and pulls out a gun. What does he get? What did he have? Uh, it looked like a nine millimeter. Okay. Uh, anyway, so he pulls it out. And people in Ohio have a concealed carry license. Okay. So like So here. it could be legal. Yeah. It could be yeah. legal. I don't know if it's legal or not. Anyway, those guys <laughs> ran. <laughs> they basically took off, went across the street. And I just got standing there and I'm like looking at him. And he's like holding <laughs> his gun. And I'm like and I go to him, I go, What I go, What? What are you gonna kill someone out here tonight? I'm like, You what is that what you're gonna do? I go, Well then do it then. Fucking shoot me. <laughs> he's like standing there, I go, Fucking do it. Motherfucker, and I'm like yelling at him, <laughs> and uh, he just says, uh, standing there, and I go, "Get in your fucking car and get the fuck out of here." And he, <laughs> and he got in his car, and he drove off. And as he's driving off, he stuck his gun out the window and shot it two times in the air. So I'm like, "All right, now I'm gonna call the police on him." You know, like I would, I wouldn't even call the police on him. So what happened? So I go to go back inside, and smoke standing out on the sidewalk, and he's like. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, you got a death wish or something? I was like, no. I mean, I might I'm be crazy. Be honest right I don't now. have a death wish, but. I I'm, would have bitched out so I'm not fast. not afraid, you know. I would have bitched out so fast. Unless I had a vest or a gun myself. Maybe if I had a vest. Uh, or I would, but you were drunk, so. And I'm and that's, that's not the first time I've seen a gun. Red Bull know? gives you wings. Or been shot at, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Cincinnati Knights. I was pretty crazy when I was young. I, was, I mean, I got my, I'm ever since that, I got myself into some fucked up situations. Like, we were selling weed. Okay. You know, I, was, um, I was like 17 years old. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know anything. Well, we were selling years. drugs. Right, and I was selling a bunch of weed. What? How did Sweet Tomatoes close and Gold Corral survive? Because Golden Corral is a na national corporation. Well, Sweet Tomatoes they're, they're Sweet huge tomatoes and big. Was too. Sweet Tomatoes was too. Well, are they? Yeah. Yeah, but not like Golden Crab. Like, everybody knows Golden Crab. It wasn't just it's Sweet a brand, Tomatoes. You know. it, it was uh, Sweet Tomatoes also had a chain called uh, Soul yeah, Plantation, does. and they had spots all over the country. Because I, I went to Sweet Tomato the first time, even though I, it would had always been here. I'd gone to one in Texas. So they, oh, well, I don't know then. Yeah, they, they were big. 
The uh-huh. Sweet Tomatoes was was big. Maybe not as big as Golden Corral. No, they didn't have the advertising. Say, Golden Corral is huge. Like everybody knows. But also think of the audience. I think of the whether or not you eat there or not. You know what it is. But if you're if you're <laughs> if you're more, I don't because you know Sweet Tomatoes. I think Sweet Tomatoes might have been vegan. Let's say right, like, it's more specialized. Right, right, right. So, so that audience is not going to go into a buffet. They're, they're going to be like, I'm staying at home. I'm not going to go into your establishment. <laughs> but if it's Golden Corral and you're some... Well, they don't give a fuck. They don't give it's a fuck. It's all Trumpelos and shit. Exactly. <laughs> we ain't wearing no masks. <laughs> my body, my what, rights, what my do you body. Mean I got to have some lady put food on my plate. No, <laughs> fuck that shit. <laughs> Let me tell well, who, you something. Who's running the chocolate fountain? <laughs> like, I can't have no chocolate fountain. Well, this is some bullshit. <laughs> Do you know how much I sacrificed my country so I can have a goddamn chocolate fountain? <laughs> and you were going to deny me my motherfucking chocolate fountain? What kind of liberal pink bullshit right, is this, exactly. man? You tell them cold pink motherfuckers <laughs> that if I don't have a goddamn chocolate fountain and some motherfucking pineapple cookies and marshmallows, I will drop a bitch. <laughs> Fuck. Call Trump. Going in Corral is like, like I said, it's the stereotypical, if you wanted to be like, oh, you went somewhere and it's, it's a redneck buffet. You're like, oh, the Golden oh, Corral? Like, <laughs> okay, I don't care anymore. Move on. The next director. <laughs> the next director. Jesus Christ. That's one thing about Liz. She's not afraid to say what's on her mind. Like, Holy <laughs> fuck. That's what I like about her. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What? You gotta respect that. Don't you think this is weird though? Like yeah. this is just such a weird time to live in. Like when do you what do you think's gonna happen when they open like I said? Have you, have you did you see the states that open have already there's cases are going up. It's like, spiking. <laughs> Duh. It's fucking hold up. No but I'm saying like it's just what I said last week. It's like either either you decide you're just going to fucking open up the country and everyone's going to get it or not get it. You know what I... You, you, or we got to figure out what the fuck's going on. Like This is something. what... This is why President Dipshit did the old divide and conquer. So what he did was he says, I'm going to leave it up to the governors to decide. Yeah. And then when people... Well, that's the way he can't take blame. He'll go... Right. If everybody starts dying in Texas, he'll go, well, it was Texas governor's decision. I didn't... <laughs> I didn't tell him to open. As a matter of fact, I strongly... <laughs> like it said, said he shouldn't. <laughs> he can't lose because he took no responsibility. Right, exactly. He, well, he always does. <clears throat> but that, you know what? That's a winning strategy. When you take no responsibility, you all you have to do is take credit I mean, for what it's works. It's unbelievable that it works, but yeah, I guess it is. Because people, people you can call have it a winning short-term strategy. memory. People have short-term memories. <laughs> but yeah. People are going to die. Yeah, people are going to die. That's the thing. And, then, you know and, and I love the people that use numbers. They're like, well, it's only like 1.2% of either. Some guy said the other day, like, even if it was a million people died, it's only point zero whatever percent of the world population, something like that. And I was like, well, that's all good until it's someone you know or love, you know. Like, it's easy to talk about these things in the abstract. When somebody that you know gets ill and dies, you know, now it's a different fucking story. <laughs> what are you doing? There was a show called The Leftovers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an HBO show. And it was about the rapture and that 4% of the world's population was raptured. Only, only four? Only 4%. 4% of the world. God, think about that. And God was like, I'll, I'll take less than 5% of you fucking pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole point of the show was how insane everyone went when only 4% right. well, let's went. Show the comments again. People were talking to us. I don't remember the name. You know, it just says people are going to die. That's cream. Yeah, people are going to die. And you know what? Of those states where the, where the spikes are, right? they probably won't care. They're going to look at it as a sacrifice to keep America going. And Well, that's the thing about it is like... Um, you can't argue with that. It's like... You can't argue with American you have to You have to just say what it is. It's like the system that we've built cannot sustain itself at all as you can see for not even one month before it's like devastating economic collapse <laughs> and if people don't go back to work 
then the whole thing will, you know. I mean, what's going to happen? Who I, knows? You know what? That's what I mean. It's like we're in this box, and because of our, we have this idiot leadership that has no plans whatsoever. Like they have no idea what they're what they're well, doing. Now, <laughs> now let's 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 assume that Joe, that Joe Biden loses. Yeah, let's assume that is Trump again, and you get Trump again. Now let's assume that you know the worst case scenarios that we can think of. Uh, no Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's gone. The courts will be forever Republican. For the foreseeable future. Sure, but that has nothing to do no, with no, no, talking I know, about I know, right I know, now. I know, I know, I know, I know. This, this, I know. this virus isn't going to go away. Right. What, I, what it, I'm it's... saying is this. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. It's Black Friday at the bars right now, yeah. But let, what, what, what I'm saying is this. Is, will the economy hold out because you're just printing money like mad? No. It Sooner won't. or later, it'll be hyperinflation. Right. You, you can't print money like endlessly before... Like that's what I'm saying is people don't seem to understand that. <laughs> to me, this is all hilarious because if you know anything about history in the world history, what was the cream saying here? Well, wait. any country can collapse. Any economy, any currency can. can world War One Germany, Weimar. No, that's what I'm saying. So, like, the, if the dollar hyperinflation, they keep printing all this money, hype, and uh, China calls in debt or whatever. Yeah hyperinflation bang and fucking people be carrying all these people have money in their mattresses and shit what's cream saying here must have set it on fire trump has been beating the drum about job creation for three years and ever right exactly Uh, now he's he's now you gotta cream smart you keep up with him (laughs) he's telling you now like that we print the money, but we give it to Boeing and uh, right, these big right, corporations. Right. <laughs> well, guess we have contracts with them, and that's the problem. But n- the thing is... That's the thing. The next part... Well, the, you know what? The next part they're going to say is... Remember when Eisenhower left office and he gave that speech? About the military yeah. complex? Yeah, yes. And that was in 1950-something. You know, you know, but like, nobody listened. Right, but I'm saying he was telling you what was going on. like, And that's exactly what happened. After that, Vietnam, all that. Like... <laughs> They took Tomkin, over the government. The Gulf of Tomkin incident where they're like, oh, we were attacked. Maybe. <laughs> That's what they were like, well, maybe. Maybe it was an attack. I just watched the Vietnam or Ken Burns Vietnam. Oh, Ken Burns war, is great. Yeah, uh, last week. And it was pretty infuriating. And, and we, like, and and we the, didn't when, accomplish anything when either. When John Kerry, whatever people say about John Kerry, like when they show that part, when he sits in the Congress and he says like, how are you going to ask somebody to be the last guy to die for a mistake? You know, and like, you just keep this going and going and going and people just keep dying. You know, it's like. The Gulf of Tompkins was a fishing boat. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But here's the thing now. So now Trump is going to be backed into a corner. If the economy goes bad and he's president again, he has to eat it. And, and that's. Well, I mean. If it goes bad, I mean, completely fuck up bad. I mean, right now we're. Well, do you don't think it's going to? No, I th- I think we're, <laughs> right now we're we're at we're at we're at bay. We're like floating in the water right now. Me and Reddish were talking about this. It's like when when you when people say that that, that like society is gonna is collapsing or whatever. Like it is. People, pe- well, I'm saying, but people act like it's gonna just happen. Like no, overnight. it's slow motion. It's like no, it's a slow degrading process. Bill like, Maher said this. He goes, <laughs> it's a slow motion car cr- uh, car yeah. crash. He, yeah, he, I think I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but he said a uh, uh, Trump has been taking away the norms of the country little by little, piece by piece, and. The the ultimate thing is saying yeah it's his go to they'll all he'll blame Obama that's right and, that, and but you gotta think about this now somebody said to him when he was running why do you keep attacking the press and he goes I keep doing it because no, you said it's the, it's it the, works like it says, it's, it's a global problem and you he said you somebody, say things enough you attack the press you say the, the press they is lose the enemy. credibility they're not telling the truth only the government can tell you the truth you but know, I'm gonna like, tell you right now I'm pissed <laughs> off about something that MSNBC did I'm fucking pissed about with MSNBC they really are a bunch of fucking assholes so they they, <laughs> they they're really a bunch of fucks and they just and they gave him so much what? fucking fuel what? these assholes what so they posted a video that of Trump being interviewed on CBS, where where uh, not Trump, Bill Barr, the Attorney General, and they right. said, "Hey, you just pardoned basically Flynn retroactively. General Flynn pled guilty." Right, right. Yeah, but he and then he goes, though? and then he goes. The judge said no. He didn't take it. He didn't take it. No, they're gonna have some kind of uh, hearing about. Right, that. right. But we, now the the 
the journalist in, uh, interviewing Bill Barr goes, what precedent do you think you're setting here by just retroactively doing this? That means that any attorney general could just nullify any case whenever. And it, with a big shit-eating grin on his face, he goes, well, <laughs> uh, history is win written by the winners. Yeah, you said it. Pause. Well. Pause. Now, there's another clip after that where he goes, but I think history will judge us fairly. There, it's the same context. He's the one who set the precedent. He's the one making the fucking comment. Right. So MSNBC got in trouble because the conservative outlet said that he didn't allow Bill Barr's full comment to be played. So they apologized for it. There's nothing to apologize for. His second half of his comment reinforces the first one. I committed a crime. Yeah, but first of all, wait, wait, no. Did they edit this video? The, what they did was they cut off this part. So he goes... Right, they cut out part of his... Right what after, saying. right after what he said, they cut it out. And it's nothing different. It's the same course of conversation. It's the same logic. History is written by the winners. Big laugh. Then he goes right after it and he goes, but I think history will judge us fairly that we did the right thing. Doesn't matter. You're the one committing the crime. What, what, what do I give a fuck if you think that you're in the right? You're just saying the same thing. But that's what I said before. That they're fanatics. But what happened was... They don't care about anything that's except not the point. That's shoving not, their fucking shit but down that's not your the fucking point. throat. It's not Bart. It was an <laughs> MSNBC apologized because they said, oh, uh, it wasn't in good journalistic taste to cut off what he said. So MSNBC apologized for something that they should have apologized for. They reported this story. Whether or not you edited the same five seconds. Yeah, well, they always do that. It was pathetic, and it gives Trump lows, it gives those fucking Trumpers the fuel that they wanted, because they go, look, the news is biased. They took the story from a biased point of view, and they cut the guy well, off. I said it before. Like, it's the same as the fear thing. Fucking like, don't. I would yeah, never apologize. You can't apologize. say that the media hasn't used fear, because they have. You know, and then people say, oh, they're fear mongering. And it's like, well, they have fear mongered in the past. To do I things. worked in news radio when I started. That's and the they thing was is you can't take anything that you. I, I always try to emphasize this to people all the time. It's, you can't trust any one thing. Yes, Josh Fulton. If I see a story. Trump's crony. Okay. I got to find it in two or three other places before I say, okay, this is real. You know, That's fair. This is a real story. And, and we all chase headlines. We'll all see the headline and go, oh! You know, mm. people go, oh, because they want to they hear what they want to hear. You know, you, you see something and you go, oh, I agree with that 100%. It's like, well, that doesn't make it well, that's real. That's your bias. That's your bias. Right. It doesn't make it real. Bias confirmation. But, Most people don't, they just, they just take whatever it is. But so. if you're a news outlet and you broadcast a story, one of the first things they do, let's say you stutter a word, they say, don't, don't say I'm sorry right after. Just keep talking. Don't constantly apologize. This is the same thing. The guy says, you know what? Two plus two equals five. And I think with time, the rest of the country will agree with me that two <laughs> plus two equals five. And then MSNBC cuts off the second half and the guys go, you know, you didn't let Barr finish. He said that the country would have agreed with him with time. And that's what you cut out. So you're apologizing for fucking nothing and showing sure, but like I said, how they pathetic always do that. you fucking are. It's just like are. the Democrats in Congress and shit. Yes. They and always fucking back down. They, they, they don't have any balls. None of them they, do. They're all spineless fucking None cowards. of them do. <laughs> no, and that's now, the problem is these fanatics run right over them because they're fucking they're just up there all uh, wishing. We could get a we shit. could get we could go down <laughs> the rabbit hole on this one and depress the shit out of everyone about how fucking bad it is on both ends. But I tell you right now, if fucking Trump gets in another four years, you know what? It's not some hippie liberal. I told garbage. you, I'm you checking say, out. It's fucking done. I'm done. I'm over. Finished. Like I'm, I'm, how bad does it have to get? Somebody said to me, "You have people have to suffer." But even when they're suffering, it's like the turkeys who stick their head in the in the rain up into the sky and drown to death. You're watching the slow motion car crash. You're asking for more. You're like, "Wow, I lost my limb in one of my eyes." Hey, you know what? Trump, no, but don't you understand? Take my Listen, leg. For a lot, of, take my for a lot leg. of these people, if you talk to them, and it's and this is true, man. If you talk to enough of them, there's a lot of them out there. That the only thing they care about is sticking it to guys like you and me. Yeah, they think that's all they care about. Oh, like man. you liberal pussy motherfucker, right? Take that. You better like your daddy Trump because he's going to be like. That's how they talk. Hey, Cletus, where's your fucking <laughs> brother? Oh, he this died. guy literally said that to me this morning. Was like on Facebook. He was like, "You better get used to your daddy Trump." You know, and I was like, and "My what father has said fuck? that four times yesterday." <laughs> 
I mean, you better get used to him. He's going to come. No, he's going to be there for the four years. 2024. Is, that motherfucker's going to be there. They don't care ah. about anything except sticking it to you. That's it. I'm going to get my the whole place AR, could burn to the ground show you around them, and they don't fucks. care. They go, look, we really stuck it to them liberals. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I don't. And I, I wonder don't. why Sherman burned the whole South. <laughs> it's like, you know what? Fuck you, motherfuckers. Just set it all on fire. <laughs> March all the way to the sea and fucking burn the whole thing. <laughs> fucking pieces of shit. But, you know, it is what it is. Human beings are fucking, uh, you know, they're fucked up. What I'll say <laughs> is that individually, uh, you talk to somebody and you could find some common ground with anybody, but then Almost as anybody. a group, they get together and oh, yeah. their, their brains go right out their fucking yeah. asses. They're just Dude, like, every time I see. I was watching this uh, documentary about Mexico uh, called 1994. I guess... Uh, it was like NAFTA year, wasn't it? Well, no, it was... Uh, mm. th- this pr- s- s- there was an assassination. Okay. And then like this, this more uh, democratic party, like started and all these people are out but anyway i'm just saying yeah and anytime they show these big rallies and groups of people and they're all like rah, 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 rah. i'm just like i don't understand it you know like i and said I before do it, like i, I don't do need leaders side. i don't feel like yeah fuck redneck fucks i son i was born in kentucky <laughs> born and raised around them like i know i know all about them and yes it's unfortunate <laughs> But the human race is fucked up. Like we were talking about that before. Like, like racism, for instance. People want to think that like only white people are racist. You know, like oh no, everyone's racist. White people have dominated the, the world, and that for the most part, and that's why we get pointed at all the time. Is be racist. But if you go anywhere, man, you know, right? Exactly. <laughs> if you go anywhere in the world, like if you go to Asia. The Asians, they're racist against the other Asians. Spanish, <laughs> <of> the Spanish. <laughs> or, yeah, Mexican will go, oh, you're Guatemalan. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 toma mama well. Like, it's just the way people are. Well, I don't know poca. why. It's unfortunate, but they're, like, tribalistic. And, you know, like, it's just the way We are animals. Think. We are animals. And we still have animals. Like the Aztecs, for instance. Yeah. They used to just go out in Mexico and just like kill and capture like whoever was out there. Like, and they, but it doesn't matter. Like, they're, they're, they're well, they're Mexicans too. They they live right there. And they don't give a fuck. <laughs> and then the Spaniards came and fucked them over the same right, way. Exactly. It's like uh, it's hard to feel sorry for them. You know. <laughs> That's like the Germans when uh, World War Two was over. The Russians came in and were raping the, the shit all, out dude. of the women. Oh yeah, the no, Russians yeah. went through the Berlin Russians, oh, yeah. and slaughtered yeah. the, uh, the Germans. A lot of innocent people paid for that, but, but that's another question, though. How were innocent, innocent are, right? Yeah. How innocent are you if you were, you know? When when the American that's ships what were seen, people don't understand about what's happening here right yeah. now. Is it everyone's there, complicit? There's a lot of people, and well, not everyone. There's a lot of people like me who are constantly like fighting and bitching, you know, and going fuck this and fuck these people. <laughs> What I'm saying is, if you let them get enough power, that, and then they start, like, they put spies, you know. That's what happened to Nazis. They put spies everywhere, you know. So let's say you get Trumpelos, they make some secret police or whatever. And then the Trumpelos, they say, you know, the people go, that could never happen here. Yes, like, it could. Yes, no, it but could. that's what I'm saying. is like people say it could never happen here, but could it? Couldn't it? If you know anything about history, like I said, world history, <laughs> you gotta you gotta be way more wary of this kind. Well, of thing. it's already there. It's already there. Think about how many people marched on the Minnesota State Capitol with guns. There's your there's your army. There's your little secret police no, right well, there. That's what I'm saying. And there's a certain amount of people that say they want here's, another, here's another what scares civil me. war and blah 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 blah. What what will scare me the most is the day that the police and it's already happened. Like a uh, couple of those guys marching on the Capitol with the guns took photos and took selfies with the cops. And that's what scares me when the police just, you know, join with them and go, we're going to make the government but our But there's image. some that are like that. Yes. See, yes. in Ohio, they're all trump lows, man. That's, that's why I left. I'm serious. Yeah. When, when Trump got elected, 
All the sheriffs, all the fucking people. That's why they chased Stormy Daniels. Yeah. They they arrested Stormy Daniels in Columbus, Ohio. Yep, on a, a trumped up charge. Right, on a trumped up charge that she beat. And then they had to pay her money. <laughs> they said falsely she was, arresting her. She was at a strip club and they said that she was uh, Either way, a prostitute. They set yeah. her up. Yeah. And they fucking tried to fucking. Well, now her stick lawyer to her. and her lawyer. And why would they do that? Because of Trump. That's it. Yeah. So what's the difference? And they think they're serving him. The only difference him. is that they right think now, they're serving him is like he's the master. America is still free enough that we can, you know, we can see through that and get away but with it. Here, okay, and, and, and my I, point is if they erode slowly enough shit. This is and what then they just put in, you know. But now, now, now I'm going to turn stuck a lot of people place. off right now. I'm going to turn a lot of people off right now. As bad as it is with all the Trump shit that you talked about, and as shitty as the Democrat candidates are, if you think, like I do, that Trump is a prime evil, that his cabinet is the most dangerous to the country. No, you know what I think is funny? No, no, no. No, but I'm saying, having grown up, like, Kentucky and, and been in church and uh, haven't been forced to read the Bible and all that shit. No, no I'm saying, if you read the book, <laughs> I know. <laughs> like Trump is the dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> he is the devil. He fits almost all the fucking criteria. That's but in remember the book. what the Bible was. The Bible was that the people. No, but I'm just saying they gold. claim to believe this. But who right? did they? Who it's did their they? book? And they don't see, like, you're falling for the, the story that's in your book. What happened to Moses? <laughs> the people made a golden idol. They made a golden idol. It makes no sense. What happened when they when they <laughs> when the Jews wandered the desert? They hoarded all the manna, and then God spoiled no, the manna. No, not that part. I'm talking no, I'm about saying all of it. All of these. I'm talking about the Antichrist shit. Yeah, no, no. They, know, Trump they, fits all the categories. He is the of golden Antichrist. idol that they that the people created for themselves. Well, that's another story, but yeah, that was the same vein. And what do the well, people do? Made, yeah, they made the golden fucking ox or whatever. Right, and but it's the same. Moses came and what the fuck are you doing? But it's the same thing. <laughs> the people chose what was, and then he had to go up and get the fucking tablets to tell people what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and the hoarding. The hoarding was the other thing. It's the stories in the Bible are so fucked up. Like the story, where, like why, why doesn't everyone just speak English? <laughs> because he, they tried to build a tower to the heaven, and then when they got, he let him go for a while. But then when they got so high, he was like, "Hey, wait a minute, like, this could be a threat." <laughs> Let me ask you a question now. Do you think? So then he came down and was like, "You're going to scatter y'all everywhere, and y'all speak differently." <laughs> and you're like, "This is this is what you're going with." Like, is the history, of, you know, like this is? Should we be speaking Aramaic or Arabic or whatever? <laughs> no, they but you know what I mean. Like, they, they don't make any sense when you really think about it. Uh, like, you should ask a Trump. Well, hey, uh, how good was Jesus's uh, English the abilities there? Because I don't think he spoke English back then. No, didn't you ever see you Passion reading? of the Christ? Yeah, I it's mean, in, it's in the whole thing is Aramaic with subtitles. Then he speak the actual Aramaic. That is, re it, that's respectable. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. If you're gonna make a movie that's like Mel that, Gibson, and you're fucking uh, fucking kudos <laughs> to Mel Gibson instead of just you know some fucking Australian Dude, guy it's on a cross. Same as uh, Apocalypto. It's all, it's all, Apocalypto is all subtitles. Yeah. And they speak like uh, Aztec and uh, some kind yeah, of Yeah, but who gives a fuck language. about that? No, no, but I'm just saying, like, he keeps it authentic. You know, the whole Perfect. thing. <laughs> <laughs> all I wanted to make the a movie. with the violence and gore that Mel Gibson is. is all I wanted to make with. a movie <laughs> about men and women in loincloths in the fucking Brazilian jungles. Dude, that's a great movie, though. Have it is. I've never seen it. I only saw the first few minutes with the dogs. It's a really good movie. Where the dogs are, like, barking crazy, and then it gets quiet, and then... Yeah, and the Aztecs come in and fucking, like, just... Uh, Annihilate them. Yeah, and, and then capture the dudes and take them back to the thing where they... The pyramid where they drag everybody up there and cut their hearts out. For oh, the, Jesus For Christ. the gods, because that's the only way the sun will rise again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's how far religion can go. Like, <laughs> who, who came up with that concept? Yes, the, the, the God is—he's thirsty for blood. He needs blood all the time, or else. But you know how we know the world will end. You know how we. So know therefore, we have to ha constantly have a stream of human mm -hmm. sacrifices <laughs> from from sun up to sundown. <laughs> Alex Jones is going to take us there. He's going to eat his. Only neighbors. stopping at night. You know, when the sun is out, there's fucking. Heart's getting cut out. 
But you see this. Dude, this shit happened. But you see this shit with Alex Jones. He's going to eat his neighbors. That's how it starts. You, you talk yeah, about he's, it. He's but eat, yeah, but you think eat his it. ass, he said. I'm going to eat his ass. <laughs> I'm going to eat his ass. The very fact that someone like that exists at all tells you everything you need to know about the human race. But that we're regressing. <laughs> we're mentally regressing that he's actually contemplating even, and he's joking uh, to a degree, but he probably is, is no, but he's just, planned it out. In his mind, he's probably put some thought into planning it out. At this point, he's like political wrestling. You know what I mean? Like some of it is blowhardy and, you know. Right. It's all like a blown up persona. But you know that someone's going to watch it and start thinking about how to fricassee their neighbor. Yeah, well, that's the problem. And I've been saying this from the very beginning. People who think that Trump could just say whatever he wants. And it's it's harmless. Like, dude, you don't understand. Like, it, like rhetoric matters. He's the president of the United States. <laughs> it's amazing. Like, he was tweeting about his his huge ratings during his coronavirus huge, hearing. Huge. You know what I'm saying? Like, people are watching it because they want to find out how not to die. They don't care about what he, you know, what he's saying or what he thinks. They're looking for him for guidance. You're not going to find and he it. He has nothing to give them except for, like, look how great I am, and I'm up here. And, and well, let's get all this. Nothing's my fault, and everything is, you know. Somebody, like, what the fuck? <laughs> somebody did something really funny. They defaced, I, I think they upgraded the pictures of uh, Mayor, the Mayor's Goodman, Carolyn, and, and uh, what's the other Goodman's name? I can't even remember his fucking name. He's the old mob lawyer. Yeah, he was for that's, that's what was at Las Vegas, still being run by the mob lawyer's wife. Fucking Lisa, <laughs> you know, Carolyn Goodman, that stupid bitch, who was wearing Tide Pod earrings then last night. You go time. down to the strip, and it's like Disney World. You know, they're like, what the, the fuck? So is we're 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 comedians. We do the we do the this mics. in we a weird the- transitional period. <laughs> there's a bar called Rebar, and behind it, uh, with Rebar is one of the places where there's open mic. And uh, famous comedians go to. And in oh, the- yeah, there's that painting of G- Goodman. Goodman. And Oscar Goodman and, and Carolyn Goodman. Yeah. There's a mural of them. Yeah, and somebody painted masks over them and said, opening this city by any means necessary. And then they painted his olive in his martini glass as a COVID, you know, virus. Really? Yeah. Oh, I want to see it. Now I want to go down there and look at it. Oh, you got a picture of it? Yeah, it's my new wallpaper. Oh, why didn't you send that to me? Oh, my God. Yeah, so... so Dude, we, whoever, seen, whoever did it is good. And that's not Photoshop. They they really took the... That's what I'm saying. That's good. We got to get green screen. We'll get green screen. Was there a barbed wire on there, too? Uh, No, that's that's from... If yeah, you're they can't behind see. Rebar. We, we got a second monitor, so that's how we're able to see your comments. Hold now. on. And, yeah, green screen is next behind us, so just keep watching... The show's gonna get better every, you know. We're putting money. Yeah, well, we're but that's my wallpaper. It. So if you go to uh, Rob Bossolari, you could see my. We care wallpaper. about it, you know. Yeah, but yeah, so that'll you be see the very interesting glass. too for the people who just listen. Yeah. <laughs> get back to work. I love it. Get back to work or die trying. Yeah. No, whoever painted that's good. No, I thought that was I thought that was Photoshop, but no, that uh, apparently. Dude, that, I want to see it. I want to go down there. And I know. It. What are you doing on Thursday? We're going to drive over there and see that shit. <laughs> on Thursday? What? I'm off tomorrow. I'm fucking... Yeah. Well, what, do I get out early enough? I think I do. I get out at 6. I want to see this shit. It's a, yeah, but you look it up. It, 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 Carolyn Goodman's got a mask that says, get back to work. And Oscar Goodman's got one on his face that says, or die trying. And he's got a COVID virus as, a, as an olive in his martini glass. <laughs> fucking brilliant. But that's what I mean. Something like this is like, I don't know. It's like, do you think, do you think when the Black Plague was happening? Oh, oh April thought the Simpsons was on. Because yeah, I know. Your okay. I know. Fuck yourself. <laughs> you wouldn't be anything without this laugh. <laughs> Neither would I. <laughs> it's actually worked out for me. Um, <laughs> no, it's crazy. Um, you think there were people in the Black Plague that were walking around like, oh, this is nothing. This is all like a, 
A scam from the king to keep everybody. <laughs> and this one, the bitch wearing Tide Pod earrings, driving down the fucking Vegas. You know what I'm right saying? Now. Like, would you, did you, did you, would you think there would be a plague going on? 2020, no. Right in people's faces in 2020, in the digital age of information and technology. And there's still people going, like, this isn't happening. People got pissed at me in Noreen's because on, I mean, on stage I, I licked my hand. <laughs> people got pissed at me in Noreen's because I licked my fucking hand. But I, I, I take it seriously in so much as, yeah, and if you got an area that's pretty bad, you got to shut it down. Somebody just said something that fucked up my head, though. Somebody who said to me, a customer, he said, let me ask you something. You think it's bad? I said, of course it's bad. You know, fucking thousands and thousands of people died. He goes, yeah, but you live in Vegas, right? And they told us it was bad. So this happened in, in December, and you had all these tourists coming in here. December, January, February, March, and there weren't a lot of deaths over here. So what's going on? Because it all went to New York first. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, man. If you follow it, ain't, that's what I mean. Like everybody has an opinion on sh- on on this shit, but most of them don't know anything the, about the, 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 it. Most the, of them don't read news. They haven't followed like. What, what's happening? They're chasing from the, the headlines. Yeah, they're just like getting whatever spoon fed to them every night on Fox News or whatever. We're like, if you're a person like me, who's my whole life, I've been, I, I didn't just turn like this overnight. No, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> when I was in the fifth grade, I mean fifth grade, when I was in kindergarten, I voted for Jimmy Carter in the shoebox. Like, <laughs> in a, in and ever since then, I've Jimmy been fascinated. Carter. Well, yeah, it was Carter versus Ford. Yeah. And I, mean, I was five years old. I was like, why not vote for this guy who fucking pardoned Nixon? Fuck him. <laughs> and I knew about that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I've been watching this shit for a long time. But Nixon, by comparison to what we have now, was still a leader. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. Now it's just... No, he resigned. Well, yeah, he was a leader. By yeah. comparison no, to Trump. That's why he resigned. Yeah. Because he still had respect and dignity and was yeah. like, and respect for the office and the government and was like, you know, I can't represent the people under these circumstances, so I have to resign. So, and he resigned. Like, Trump should have done that a long fucking time ago. <laughs> hey, uh, April says she fucking uh, Ah, yeah, yeah, they all say that. The laugh. Her laugh made yeah. you, uh, made, well, you know, your laugh they, made her laugh. It gives me what I want, that's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hey, Broly, come on. The guy laughed for you, you know. Just saying. I mean, you know where he lives. Not her specifically. I'm just saying in general. <laughs> hey, bro, you got some hot friends. Hook him up. Hook him up. His quarantine really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this quarantine could start sucking for you. Either way. <laughs> High C and Budweiser. Jesus fucking Christ. It's water, motherfucker. Oh, yeah, it's a, high C. Who the fuck drinks high C? What do you got here? What is this? <laughs> it's Kool Aid. Oh it yeah, the high C. <laughs> the fuck is? Well, you're, you're from the I Midwest. I only got had high C since I was like ten, 10 years old. <laughs> well, you probably got a bagel in there. Probably got like a uh, fucking. You're from Kentucky. I'm sure they drink Fago in Kentucky. Mountain Dew, son. Mountain Dew. Well, when I was young, I was poor, so Kool Aid. Kool Aid, raise on it. Have you ever had nothing? And when you're in college and you're poor, you put uh, vodka in your Kool Aid. Yeah. <laughs> so, I got some friends that living great in Kool Aid vodka. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And they would call <laughs> nutcrackers, and they would sell you a tub of macaroni salad, and they cut an X in it, and then they fill it with Hennessy, and then add the sh- the, the Kool Aid packet, and charge you five dollars. Macaroni salad? No. So you know the containers of macaroni uh, salad? Yeah. They because they were cheap. You could buy them like dozens of them. Right. They'd make that a cup. They'd put the lid on it. Put oh. Them Okay, okay. And they'd fill it with hard liquor and right. then fill it with one little like like pixie stick of Kool-Aid right. and charge you for it. And these dudes used to work at the radio station I worked at. They'd come in with like a cooler full it's like of like a them. bodega? Well, no. This is actually at my radio station there where I won't even give the name because I don't know fun. what I'm saying. Like, where did they get the... <clears throat> I never understood where they got them, but they would, they would have... Some bodega. Yeah. And they would come in and they'd go, hey, yo... Now, for the you got pe- them macaroni cloud cups, like, <laughs> yo, yo, my nigga Rob, what you want, man? What you want? You want this Apple Teeny shit? I need you to be quiet, man, because we're trying to sell this shit right now. You, you got a big mouth, my dude. So look, I'm gonna hook you up with one for free, man. Just be cool. How you drink out of a square vessel? They give you a, they give you a, a straw. 
So you've got the. So you're holding a square container. No, no, round one, a round one. Oh. Yeah, yeah, still, <laughs> anyway. still looks stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's high class. Like. <laughs> Fucking hey, man! You get tore up fast on that shit because they they grab. You know, I've never done that. I want to do just what? once. What? Because I haven't done it. This the scissor rip or whatever. Oh, scissor rip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never had it. That's uh, what is that again? It's That's codeine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, which which I've had in pill form, <clears throat> but I just like to drink the scissor with Sprite. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, just, they mix I'd, with Sprite. I'd like to do it like one. Lean. They call that lean too. Yeah, it's called lean. Lean it makes you lean. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know. Clear my throat a lot today. I Some used to like uh, what, whatever. You getting the fucking COVID? <laughs> oh man! If, hey, you always talking about me. If like, I got to be buried, you're you the one that's in that fucking dirty ass furniture store. You bury my ass in New York. <laughs> don't fucking bury me out here in the desert. I'll bring fucking rain and fucking pestilence for forty fucking days if you bury my ass out here. <laughs> I like some of you out here, but you'll you'll have to go to the fucking They'll funeral home you. in New York. They'll take you back to Bronx or wherever the fuck you No, go. I want to go to Hartsdale. That's where I want to be buried. In Hartsdale, 365 Seacourt Road, across from the old radio station. Uh, there's a beautiful cemetery there, the highest point in Westchester County. You know, I don't think I want to... I don't want to be buried. I want to I wanna scatter my ashes somewhere. No, I want a fucking full crypt. I want a sepulcher. Yeah. I always love the ocean, so sometimes I feel like... I just cremate me in and put me in a urn or whatever. Sailing. And toss me into the ocean. Yeah, and just leave. And then I'll just be in the ocean. Then. Could it be? There's no Christopher Cross. Where did you learn between the moon and New York City? <laughs> I know it's crazy. But it's There's true. a movie that still holds up. Fuck that Russell Brand. Uh, fucking, that, and, and he wasn't drunk. If you watch the old one, yeah. it's still funny. Yeah, and he, the whole point and, was and he no was one a played a, No one played it drunk like Dudley Moore. Dudley Moore was a <laughs> fucking man. No one played it drunk like drunk. Liza Minnelli. Well, she wasn't a drunk, though. She was the waitress. No, but she, she, she's also fucking whacked out on drugs back then. Well, yeah, but she, her character wasn't. He was the drunk. But she Russell would, Brand was just she was crazy. The one, she was the one that was going to get him, you know, off of being a drunk and like, yeah. get his life straight, you know, whatever. They made an Arthur too, and it sucked. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> but the original Arthur is still funny. I hate remakes. Me too. I all of them. And sequels, hate. mostly. Most so, of the time. Well, that was like the Matrix sequel was the dumbest fucking thing. Wait a minute. No, the, the, the second one was good. You know how But they got progressively worse. The first one was like a brilliant work of genius art. And you're like, what the fuck? It was this? a standalone movie. Mind blowing. Movie. Yeah, standalone like movie. mind blowing. You're like, wow, what the fuck? Exactly. Then the second one was like, okay, this is a first rate action movie set in that world. Mm. And then the third movie was like, what the fuck is this piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> but do you understand how racist the Matrix is? Because think about this now. In the second movie, in the first movie, it was one ship saving the world, as far as we knew. One ship, the Nebuchadnezzar. The Nebuchadnezzar was the only one. Was the only ship. And Lawrence Fishburne is the fucking. And Neo's now God. And little by little, they'll right. save the human race. Now the second movie comes along, and there are three ships, and there's two black captains and one white captain. Right, but the white captain is clearly in charge. The white <laughs> captain has the only ship with guns on it. You think right. about that? That's it. He's clearly in charge. The hammer. <laughs> I command the hammer. Right. There was the Lobos, no guns. Nebuchadnezzar, no guns. The hammer had fucking M34 <laughs> GE Gatling guns on that motherfucker. And it was only, and you only see three ships, and it's the white captain who got the guns. We're not going to give any of these black <laughs> guns. <laughs> And then they the, can't be trusted. And then on the fucking <laughs> Uncle Tom Commander black dude, that Uncle Tom motherfucker, because every time when the black captain wanted to do something, he's like, you just handed them the docks. You just handed them everything. Why do I even let your black ass leave? <laughs> like, what the fuck am I watching? Jesus Christ. And then all of the all of the people in the council, well, they all had diamonds. That one to, bitch, that old bitch had diamond jewelry. Come to find out, Brandon told me that uh, all that was ripped off by from some black old black lady that wrote some novel like what a in shocker. the 60s uh, that they, they stole her idea basically and uh, she took him to court no wonder it got fucking even worse <laughs> right and they're like you can't use their ideas anymore <laughs> 
well, what are we going to do now? We still got to make a third movie. <laughs> wasn't George Carlin in one of the uh, Scream things, wasn't he the architect in like one of the spoof movies? I think they used him as the architect when one uh, of them. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure George Carlin was. I only remember the Carlin's uh, dogma. Yeah, where well, he's like, well, every now and then you got to blow a trucker. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Get you where you want to no, go. No, that, that was Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. That was Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. And he no, goes, it's dogma. I no, believe. Really, just a blowjob scene, and, and he tries to do it on the nu- on the nun, and he tries to eat the nun out. No, it might be, yeah. It, might it was be. Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Fucking swear. Either way, it's fucking great. Yeah. He's like, yeah, every now and then you gotta blow a trucker. Yeah. No, yeah, no, he was a priest in Dogma, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but Jane Silent Bob, Bob Strike yeah, he had one of the old Bob. No, that's there. a classic. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> Where he's like, well, get you where you want to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like that. Hey, Boo Boo Kitty, fuck. Carlin. They're coming back with another Clerks. The world misses Carlin. Really? Again, like, is that necessary, you think? Clerks 3. You know, is it? It should like, still like be in black and white. the first Clerks, and then the second one was in color. And it was like, ah, you know. It had its moments, but. Rosario Dawson. It's, that's the thing. It's like, the, it's, like, it's like a heroin thing. It's like, you're always chasing, you know. You're never going to chase. You're never going to get. So you have, wait, you have clerks? Like, you achieve a greatness, and then you're like, okay, I can achieve that again. Like, no, you can't. You have like, more move rats. on. Make something else that might be great. Clerks, more rats. <laughs> Chasing Amy was in that same one, right? But that's what capitalism... Stifles. Dogma. To me, capitalism stifles art. For that reason. Because, like, when something becomes successful, they're like, oh, we got to We have more. Just we that. need more of this. You know, like... <laughs> there was something that just came... Oh, they're going to do a, a they Joker They just move too. on and do something else. They're doing a sequel to The Joker already. Well, comic book stuff, I don't mind as much because... Will it be good, though? No, but... Uh, but can it be good? Because it was almost like a one-off movie. He was mentally disturbed. Well, that's the thing is, that was my complaint about the movie was he wasn't Joker long enough. Right. You know, so I'm not going to judge him as the Joker until he's the Joker the whole fucking movie. And then you go, okay. Now, what you saw was like a prequel thing. And that was fine. He did and, it was, and it was wonderful. No, yeah. And his performance is fucking great. But like, now how is he as the Joker? Like, will, that's also, will he learn to fight? He was only, that's what I mean. And I had a real problem with the age discrepancy. Well, the problem is now, let's say like, that okay, Batman so shows Batman's along. Batman's 12 years old or whatever, and he's fucking 30. You know, he's like, 38. He's going to be 55. He can't be fighting Batman. You know, like, yeah. So uh, I had a real problem with that. That's going to be a problem. That was my only problem with the thing. Was how like, old oh, is they, he going to be when Batman shows up? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, oh, they fucked it up. Like, <laughs> And he was going to be Batman by then. Like, Is it still going to be Robert Pattinson? Oh, oh God. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> We were having a good time. Right. But that's, well, you know what? I said before, I'm willing to... Take a chance. Right. I'm going to reserve judgment. And as, as a true and loyal Batman fan, I will watch There's his, only one good I Batman. will watch his movie with an open mind. And... Here's the, the hierarchy liked, of Batman. I liked Bale. Michael Keating. Keating was great. Then Bale. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the guy's a tub of lard right now who had the blonde hair. Uh, uh, f- oh, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Then George Clooney. Oh, Clooney was the worst. And, <laughs> and I'm not, that, movie, that whole movie was fucking garbage. And I'm not counting, uh, I'm not counting Adam West because that's a whole different... No, it's a whole scene. No. A whole different thing. No. We don't count Adam West in that. No. He's on his own. It's his own yeah. special... It's his own plateau. Like. Yeah, that was, that was campy, tongue-in-cheek. They were trying to be serious with that shitty George Clooney one. I got you. No, I got you. Uh, the whole thing was uh, fucking garbage, man. Uh, man. That's and and again, as a person who likes Clooney, that was his worst career choice of, of all. Time. What I wanted to see was <laughs> one more Christopher Nolan one because they had should have never did that. They had Robin at the end of that last Christopher Nolan one, and we never got to see Batman and Robin. Because right. they, yeah, well, he I, you know what? As a, as a person who likes Batman, you don't care about Robin. I don't. Yeah. I like Dark Knight Batman where he's alone. 
Yeah, but he they they had they made the deal to to establish that he was Robin, and, I, and they read, brought him in the I've cave. I read all the, but I'm saying like as a as a person who grew up reading comics and shit before they can make all these movies, all you have is comics. So I read all the Batman and Robin comics, and there's one, and it didn't turn me off from Batman because of Robin and all that. The Marvel movie. ones pissed me. I off. like when Frank Miller turned it into Dark Knight, and they mm. got rid of Robin, and like ever since then, Batman's been on his dark, you know. It's more about examining the psychologies of all these fucked up people. Same thing with Punisher. No, that's what I'm saying. The Frank Miller Punisher. Well, that's what I like. Yeah. So it's psychological. Like, you don't. You don't want Michael Bay. You want Stanley right. Kubrick. Yeah. Exactly. Like I like that. I'm a little more heavy. That's you know? why. That's why I get pissed off when they do new Star Trek and new Star Wars because there was a psychology to it. Even Star Wars, as simple as it was, had a psychology to it. When Luke was running around in episode six and he force chokes one of the guards and you're like, Whoa, he's using Vader's moves. And he's dressed in all black. He's he's actually right. turning fucking evil. And then he looks at himself and he goes, I've been doing what Vader does and I'm dressed in all black and I'm fucking got a robot hand now. I'm fucking Whoa, okay, there was some psychology to it. Now it's just like I am every Jedi. I no, am that, every city. Yeah, that that, that movie. Bah. I'm sorry. Bah. I wanted bah. to like it. Uh, that movie was total garbage. Yeah. And every, they're doing the whole thing was garbage. Every Star Destroyer now has a cannon on it. W- w- what? Right, every right. Star Destroyer has a Death right. Star cannon? Right. What we, the fuck we did that happen? We can destroy multiple planets and multiple times. And, and we, I, we've just chosen not to do it. I <laughs> made Snoke. For some reason. Right. right. And that was a whole, like I said, plot hole they left out. Uh, who about is the Snoke? Snoke? Who is he? Where did he come from? Like all of a sudden he's there. I made Snoke. And he's like, I'm there. And, I'm really new. and Snoke was in a vat right next to him. And he's, he's just him. there to to like uh, um, dominate uh, Adam Driver or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like the whole, the, the, all of it was very like it shoddily was, done. It was a B-plus movie. But the, 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 it the, even isn't that to me. The eighth movie was a dumpster fire. Dumpster. Because the eighth movie was, first of all, we're on a ship, and uh, we can't chase them because they're faster than us. But they have no fuel. They're running out of fuel, but we can't catch up to them, even though we have a fleet. And, um, um, um. They just so many, it's like. And, 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 and we sent TIE fighters there, and the TIE fighters destroyed all the X-Wings, but we can't send the TIE fighters around for a second run because the ship is faster than the TIE fighters that already destroyed the bridge of the ship. <laughs> Which made no fucking sense. That's what I mean. Like, there's so many holes. Like, and then Princess Leia is Mary fucking Poppins. Right. And she can float she's through space like Mary. Space. And then she's naked for some reason. Like a Star Lord. Like. <laughs> That's what I thought. It was like, immediately, it was like, oh, this is a rip off of fucking Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> oh, and by the way, you see in episode nine that w- they did some, they, good, they did really tasteful CGI to make her, they show her training with a lightsaber when she was young. I thought that shit was dope. But then I'm like, now I'm being a dick. I'm being a dick right now, okay? Explain her fat ass now. If she could do fucking cartwheels and backflips with the force, how the hell did she gain so much fucking weight? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I told you. She's got old. I'm being a the piece of shit. Want? I'm she's, being a piece of shit. She's fucking 60 years old. And, and oh. she's on several fucking medications. <laughs> <laughs> the force was not strong with her. <laughs> It's unfortunate. But no, no. But you know what? I, what I, happens, I, people? No. In all seriousness, she, they, they, they. In the last movie, they used her. They used her well. She. My life's been like opposite. Like I grew up. Like, they did a good job with like her. The the end. I did like her. No, what I'm saying. But you start off fat. I was like a there. fat kid. You know, I was fat when I was young. You know, fat. Everybody's picking on you. And fat, and then I graduated high school and. I, I got thin all of a sudden. I don't know. Yeah. I got the the gym I is not doing open. all this shit. I need to get rid of the beer. Bottle. Oh it's Jesus Christ! It's not, don't do that. <laughs> it's not bad. It's actually going down a little. Nobody bit. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> You're goddamn right. I don't want to see it. I get uh, the gym's got to reopen, man. You got to reopen this gym, man, so I can burn off the calories from the Goldie Corral. The gym. That's another one. You know they're going to open a gym. Like they're going to. You know they're going to open what? it and exchange your bodily fluids. <laughs> what can what can possibly go wrong? <laughs> so they already described how it's going to work. And but I'm like, just saying, like it's it's it's, 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 it's <laughs> <laughs> Second phase is going to be alternating equipment. When I was in like fifth or sixth grade, 
take science class, you should understand just from that alone what is going on. Yeah, but imagine the fact what it's that like we now. don't as a whole society is is mind blowing to me. How far we've we fallen. When I left like, New York, now I worked at a place called Third Universe. It's a comic book store in Croton on Hudson. A free plug for the guy Brian Dale, my my one of my lifetime friends. Still there, and he's got the store. It's still there. Yeah, of course. He he does shows. He does shows on on Facebook and YouTube and all of them too. And so each night he'll do like one night will be Pokemon, one night will be Magic, Dungeons and Dragons. He's the one teaching me how to use a lot of this new equipment. Some of it is new to me. He's got a green screen, and then he'll show the game happening behind him, and then he'll do a commentary. And uh, so he's very. Well, why can't he fucking show us how to do that? Well, I gotta get by a fucking <laughs> green screen. It's fucking he, the shit he bought was not cheap. It was not cheap. He bought a four K oh, camera, like two poles, and a fucking. No, he bought professional lighting. He bought like basically. Oh well, we don't have to buy all that. Shit. Yeah. Well, anyways, he um I mean, he we, would we really could, do, but what he does is he <laughs> lets the little kids come in and they can do their homework after school. And this was 10 years ago. So the kid came in and he goes, and I was working in his shop. And the kid goes, I need help, Rob. And the guy, the kid's name is Kasim. Beautiful, just a lovely kid. And he was. Kasim, where is he from? He was, this is Croton on Hudson. And uh, New York, just know. north of New York City. Okay. And now this is 10 years ago. New York school, right? So you would think better, better education. It is statistically Maybe. better than a lot of other places. It depends. Fourth grade kid. Again, right? it depends where you're going. Fourth grade. This was his homework assignment. He couldn't figure it out. Maybe you could say he had a learning disability, but I doubt it. Because, again, this is what they were assigning a fourth grader. It was an outline of New York State. And there was a squiggly line going up it, and that was the Hudson River. One big star, and it said Albany. And the, and the, high, and the, and the text on the top said the Empire State. On the bottom was a dot where New York City was. And this is the kid's homework, and he couldn't figure it out. He goes, I need help, Rob. Okay, okay, what's up? Hey, what, well, there's blanks. Okay, what does it say? New York is the blank state. Kasim, read what's on the paper. What does it say there? New York Empire. I don't get it. Kasim, all the answers are in big, bold letters. And those, you know, the big letters and the t- and small letters. Now, you have to understand something. I'm make, making fun of the kid. You have Dude, to that, make, no, listen. That was the curriculum in the fourth grade. Now, in the second grade, no, when listen, I was this, a kid, but, I had to read the autobiography of Lincoln, Kennedy, uh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. That was my second grade. Well, that was another thing. Well, no. When I, when, I lived in, no when, I, when I lived in Florida. No, this is no shit. When I lived in Florida, right, I lived with this girl, and she had a son. So basically, I was his stepfather for several years. One of those. Yeah. Okay. You but keep any, in touch? No, I tried to, but. All right. It was weird. Um, You're not trying to fuck him. <laughs> I do think about him sometimes. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He uh, had, like, behavioral issues of some, you know. So the school calls one day, and they go, you got to come and get him because he's acting up or whatever. So, okay. And then they said, you can't bring him back until he's medicated. Oh, Jesus. They won the Ritalin. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, what? Uh, I didn't agree with it. (laughs) And you didn't sign up for that either. (laughs) No. No, I didn't. But, uh. I mean, it is what it is, man. Yeah. No, I'm just saying about my looking at the modern, I mean, at the world and what it is. I didn't agree with it, but it's not my kid. So it's her, it's her decision to make. So she gets the medication, and then I take him back to school. Mm-hmm. And I go... Was the kid a zombie? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Much. I mean, it's, it's awful. That's what Ritalin does. Yeah. It's, but people don't just don't want to deal with these fucking kids. That's the, and that's the saddest thing. But no, here's my point of the story. Is I took him back and I go, here he is. And here's his medication. And she goes, oh, thank you very much. And she takes his medication. And she goes to this cabinet. And uh, takes the key and opens the cabinet. Full of drugs. Opens it. And it's like CVS Pharmacy in there. That's yeah. embarrassing. And right then I was like. That's not the kids we're, anymore. That's and this is the in the 90s. And I was like, we're fucked. Like, we're fucked. 
We're literally f- in the '80s. Okay, so when I no, was, what I'm just saying, yeah, like, I know they didn't do that in the '80s. In no, the that's 80s. what I mean. It's yeah. like they're blending kids on drugs when they're fucking like this kid was like in the fucking third grade or something. So when I was in kindergarten, <laughs> I wouldn't. You're I like, w- dude, this is we're fucked. I couldn't sit still when I was in kindergarten. And you see what's happening to us now. Couldn't sit still. I kept bouncing up around. I kept bouncing. Around. Hey, it was a kid with energy. You know my what they did? They said uh, we're not going to send your son back because his grades aren't bad. He's fucking kindergarten. They said so. What we're going to do is we're going to send him to pre first. And what they did was they had this old Irish teacher pre first. Yeah, so they had this like between kindergarten and first. Correct. Like for the. <laughs> and you know what they did? No, they they were because later on they didn't have it and they just gave the kids a Ritalin. If I was sitting out of my chair, ass in the air, all bouncing around the wall. Sit down. I got the little pointer stick on the ass. Mrs. Mackey. Well, yeah. That was it. There was, and by the way, dude, that when, was I, it. When, I'm, when I was a kid, <clears throat> they could call you into the principal's office and hit you with a wooden paddle. We never got the paddle. <laughs> it was never ridiculous. No, but I'm saying, like, no welts. Like, like, I that. lived through that time period, too. And, like, it wasn't like they just beat you the shit out of you every day. Like, if you fucked up and did some shit. They fucking hit you with the paddle. And you never and did it again. Did, well, yeah. Or you didn't, you know, you, you at least thought about it. <laughs> You're like, well, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> Anxiety. It's a, no, I mean, I, I, uh, that was it. And it was, and you know, it was the same fucking curriculum. You learned, you know, reading, writing. Around. No, this is another part of the growing up that I found weird is that they always come and take you like, and they always come and take me out of... First of all, I moved around a lot, mm. right? So whenever you move, you go to a new school, they want you to take all these tests and shit because they want to they wanna know, like, who are you? Who is this kid? And what, what, where to put you in the hierarchy of, you know, the education. Right. So if you placement, go Placement. They call it placement. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. You got to take a placement test. Uh, right? Yeah. So I'd always go and take these placement tests and they put me up. And then you take these tests, achievement tests, they used to call them, mm-hmm. every year. And then I take those tests and they come back to me and go, you're in the top 5% of the country. The Crab McCall test. Those little blue books. Right. Green but they, but they'd be like, your scores are in the top 5% of the country. We believe you might be a genius. You're gifted. <laughs> and then they take you and put you in these special uh, classes that were not not the special classes you think of. The special classes for smart people. Right. Where they <laughs> you're on your way to the Ivy League. Right. They take you to the fucking... Uh, they're grooming you to be in an Ivy League. They're going to groom they're you. They're trying to, yeah. yeah. But I was fucking raised by stoner hippies, so... No Ivy League for you. Right, but I'm like, oh, I'm in the top 5%. Like, I was just getting high with my dad last night. Dude, fucking... <laughs> hey, thanks, Mr. Leonard. Me and your son... No, my point is, I used to not believe it. Yeah. I used to be like, this can't be, you know, like, true. Like, whatever. But now I look around the world that we're living in now, and I go, yeah, that's fucking true. <laughs> well, that's one of my... That's one of the lines I of am my different jokes. than these people. Fuck these people. That's one of the lines <laughs> of my jokes. I said, uh, you know... I'm arguing with somebody from Vegas, and, I, and they say to me, where'd you go to high school? And I said, Lakeland, what about you? They said, basic. I said, no, not what type of high school. Where'd you go? What's the name of it? Basic. What the fuck is your problem? That's no, the name of the school here. is basic. And I went, what fucking shitty-ass county is this? And they couldn't even fucking name a high school. They just gave up. <laughs> like, I don't, you can't find some fucking what is it? crack it's just pimp your, senator. Your basic go? school. I mean. <laughs> Walls and Holy books. shit! This, <laughs> this fucking town's embarrassing. I don't want to raise a kid here. I'll tell you right now. I don't think I'd want to raise a kid. No, days, no, 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 no. I'm glad I came here when I was an adult. You want your kid hitting the pole, Vegas? You want your kid right. working the stretch on Trop in uh, definitely, Orleans? Yeah, there's definitely like a seedy, yeah, uh, black hole of seediness that will suck people down if they have any kind of inclination towards that kind of activity. <laughs> If you want your kid to be working the track from Valley View to the Orleans on Tropicana. Although still, I still haven't found or seen it. <laughs> All this debauchery that's supposed to go on here. I got, I, I've seen bits and pieces of it, but nothing like they describe where it's just right. not on 24 like it's hours. It's just orgies everywhere and fucking whores. And, like, I, I haven't seen any of it. Like, no. No, I even once more went to the green like door. I've been quarantined for a while. I just want to get my dick sucked. Just want to <laughs> <laughs> Again, what did I just fucking tell you? You go to Orleans Casino, right there on Trop, they'll take care of you. Orleans. 
Yeah, the Orleans. It's closed. The Orleans. But even that's closed. Yeah, but no, outside the Orleans are the whores. Oh, they're still there? Yeah. Even though the place is closed? Yeah, but the, here's the thing. In front How of the, do they not look even more suspicious? Well, that was the funny thing. So when they should like, why, started, are you, when, why are you ladies hanging out in front of this closed casino? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is the horror. It's a funny league. thing, officer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what happened? I saw a chick get arrested on the first week that, that, that they shut everything down. There was this Asian chick out there, and she was wearing hooker heels. Right. She was not even trying. Like, the black chicks will dress up like in mom clothes, and then they'll come up to you and be like, what you want? What you want? What are we doing tonight? What are we doing tonight? They'll, they'll open. And if your doors are unlocked, they will get right in your car and they go, okay, daddy, what you want? Are you a cop? Are you a cop? You have to tell me. And then they'll reach for your dick and they'll go, you People just say that. Look, are you a cop? <laughs> hey, hey, you hey. have to tell me. Like, they don't fucking tell you anymore. <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, hey, look, hey, look. Shut, shut, quiet, quiet. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Are we having fun? What are we doing? Where are we going? You got a room or do you want me to go to my room? What are we doing? Am, now, I, am I having fun? But this was an age. Well, I, I was having so much fun, I thought I'd drive through this empty parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> but this was a Thai chick, and she was Asian. And uh, so she's standing there in front of the gas station by the, the Horleans, I call it. And uh, fucking, she's wearing the hooker heels, the plastic pumps and shit. And then two guys on bicycles arrest her. And they had on fucking. Hey, you were telling me that. Yeah, the bike cops. And the bike cops arrested her, yes. and they and and uh, so they leave. They With left their little her. helmets. No, oh, yeah, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> she and she was so cool about it because she did. They weren't even threatening. Excuse me, what are you doing out here, ma'am? It wasn't like that. That, that <laughs> fucking like three hundred pound skinhead cop that just got got out of the fucking truck ready to beat your fucking ass. No, this right. is one of those like this was like a tad cop. Hi, my name is Tad. Dude, my friend Tad is cool. Don't give me his fucking name. Seriously. He is cool. All right. He just didn't want to get shot. <laughs> Neither did I, And I didn't blame him. I was like, I don't blame you. Neither did Tad the cop on the bicycle or race. Like, I, I'm running this place, so, like, I got to take the risk of getting shot. But, like... You know, I'm not paying him enough to be like. That's why. Can you get shot for fifty bucks for me, please? And that's why they had the guy on the bicycle because he he could take down a hundred pound Asian woman. He wasn't going to take down a two hundred pound man, but he could take a hundred pound Asian woman and right. get her to the ground. I was wondering why don't they put like when you see these cops they get fat. Like why don't they put the fat cops on the bikes? Hey, and they lose hey. fucking weight. Look at you. <laughs> Take the fucking fit cop that's on the bike and put him in the fucking. Well, you're gonna have beat. to uh, float take that idea. Take the fat cop and put him on the bike and he'll lose some fucking weight. Did everybody? You're gonna have to float that idea by Ve Las Vegas future mayor. I happen to know that our future mayor. I'll go to city council meeting and propose it next month. <laughs> uh, hi. I see a lot of fat ass cops that need to get on their fucking bike. <laughs> You got to bring it up to Mayor Ralph Tatella. He's going to be the next yes. mayor of Las Vegas. Make that number Ralph Tatella for mayor. All right, we got to get out of here. Yeah. It's been fun. Thank you. It's been fun. Thank you again for uh, watching, every single one of you. And uh, we'll be back next week. Good night. Good night.